Right here. Okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Professor Keep for inviting me to speak today and including me in the working groups that we've been uh, meeting about almost monthly to plan for this and just talk about MLM uh, issues. And I also want to take a moment to thank Dr. Darvis uh, and the new, the, ah, I always say it wrong, the College of New Jersey School of Business for sponsoring today's event. I think it's really important that we're all here and I appreciate you uh, having us. So as Danielle said, my name is Mallory Grant. I am a K through four music teacher from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I also have a musical theater degree from Shenandoah Conservatory in Winchester, Virginia. And I am currently pursuing a master's degree in clinical or in school counseling and clinical mental health where I intend on working with survivors of cults and high control groups. As an anti-MLM social media activist, I create content on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, specifically educating on the dangers and deceptive practices of multi-level marketing. Now, when I first started doing my content creation, I created characters that parodied your typical Hun, a Hun bot. And Hun being the trope that has been adopted as the term for uh, the behavior of MLM reps that we frequently encountered and that most of us up here on the panel uh, that we were, we were these Huns. So this primarily was because most of our messages started with, hey Hun, and then it went from there. Now, over time, I have shifted my content away from parodies, and I've started creating a news show, a monthly news show of sorts, recapping notable, notable events in the MLM communities and the anti-MLM communities with special appearances from my characters. I originally became inspired to start making this content, though, when I discovered the anti-MLM movement on TikTok, specifically my friend and now colleague, Roberta Blevins. At the time I discovered this movement, I had spent two active years as a consultant for the company formerly known as Perfectly Posh. Perfectly Posh was soap. So it was just soap. It seemed like a no brainer, like you're just selling soap, everybody showers, no big deal, right? There's no harm in selling soap. I hosted numerous virtual Facebook parties and I was a member of so many Facebook groups sharing graphics and tips back and forth on how to sell the soap, but more specifically, how to recruit people into my downline. I was sending countless messages to my friends asking them about their hygiene routine. And I even held a fundraiser at the school I used to work for for the show choir I directed to raise money for that show choir. And even though it was approved by our administration, I now feel that that was an unethical thing to do. So we've talked a lot about this survey. Roberta showed you a lot of the responses we got from the survey. And as I was going through all of it, one of the responses really caught my eye. And it reminded me why we're here today, why we're doing what we're doing. The quote said, I think that the anti-MLM movement, it may open some people's eyes to bad experiences others may have encountered while in an MLM, but not everyone has bad experiences and people will still be part of MLMs regardless of someone else's negative experience. But that got me thinking because see, I didn't have a textbook negative experience. In fact, when I ultimately became anti-MLM, I still was selling for Perfectly Posh. But what opened my eyes was when I was watching everyone's content on social media and realizing that I was using the same methods that I was being educated on. Methods like be a friend first and the sales will come later. Have these conversations with people on your social media and then when it just feels natural, offer them your product. I remember vividly feeling really weird or uncomfortable um, forcing these extra conversations with the people that I knew just to reach out and chat because I think it's unrealistic to expect that you can be that level of a friend with someone with everyone you know. I was constantly reaching out to people asking them about their real life problems knowing that my underlying mission was the sale or actually the recruit. And so what I didn't realize at that time was that that cognitive dissonance was starting to show its face. And it's because of this movement that I was able to start recognizing it. And even though I still didn't and still don't view my experience as negative, I don't think that every awakening to this movement has to be associated with trauma. Um, for many of these reps, 
it can be a very challenging and painful process to wake up and move out of MLM to non-MLM, not even anti-MLM. And we have to remember that um, it takes time, it takes patience, it takes compassion, but you don't have to be traumatized to want to protect other people from trauma. And I said, I've not had an, I didn't have a negative experience, but when the movement encouraged me to do my own profit loss analysis, I was really, really shocked. So on November 3rd of 2021, I shared this graphic detailing my profit loss analysis. So over the course of two years with Perfectly Posh, I sold a total of $11,135 in soap. The commission I earned was $3,112. But the amount of money that I spent, the orders I placed from my bank account where my daily nine to five job was paying me and I spent money to Posh was $3,000. $512.72. So do not get me started on the inventory loading that was told was not necessary when I signed up. All of this was disguised as you can resell it. It can be gifts to your customers as a thank you, but it really just ended up being in my bathroom. Another comment that caught my eye and to the same question as before said, I think it's hard to answer this question without knowing what the goal of the anti-MLM movement is, on social media rather. In my experience, some creators never identify their goals. Others state their goal is to educate people who are not in MLMs yet so they can avoid being sucked into MLMs. Uh, and then the other goal is to provide content to, that helps get current MLMers out. Others say their goal is to expose the MLM industry as a whole. So I started thinking, well, I want goals then. I've mentioned in the recent past on my platform um, that we don't have, Anti-MLM doesn't have a formal organization. And so we all have very different goals and purposes and, and motivations for what we go into this to do. So I decided for myself, and I'm going to share with you today, I wanted to create my own personal goals and agendas. So goal number one is to provide education on the various misleading tactics used to manipulate the downline and help them identify it. So this can be demonstrated by highlighting various aspects of the BITE model, a system that we should all be familiar with by Dr. Stephen Hassan, uh, to help identify those methods used in high control groups and or cults. My second goal is to provide education on the MLM company's policies and procedures, their income disclosure statements, if they have them, and highlighting the aspects that the aspects, excuse me, that explicitly state the company does not and will not hold itself responsible for the reps uh, if they do something that is against government regulations that actually do exist because the MLM is just gonna terminate that rep. They're not gonna hold that rep accountable. They're not gonna keep and protect the rep. They're gonna terminate them. Because for example, the CEOs and the HR departments of Herbalife, as an example, they're not holding monthly trainings for new recruits to train them on their policies and procedure statements and go over those income disclosure statements with new recruits. They don't care. The people doing those trainings are your upline. So if you get in trouble with the FTC, that cord can be cut as easily as it was tied. And goal number three is offering content that reaches all MLM reps in a manner that is kind and inviting. My content did not start that way. And, uh, and there's always room and time to grow and change and make our content better. MLM reps are both victims and perpetrators. We up here were both victims and perpetrators. And the people who are existing in these high control groups or commercial cults, guiding them out is going to take healing, patience, and empathy. So the point that I really want to drive home today is that a multi-level marketing rep doesn't have to have a negative experience in order to recognize that the methods being used are unethical. I agree with the first commenter in my presentation. People will still be part of MLMs, regardless of our efforts here today. As Bill mentioned earlier in his presentation, there are 8 billion people in this world. So it's unrealistic for us to assume that our efforts are gonna stop every single person from joining an MLM. But what we can do 
is work to demand the government regulations that we need on those companies who allow the reps to, to uh, be deceptive in recruiting their teams and using those manners and continue to educate the public on the tactics used to manipulate them and keep their money pouring up the pyramid. So I would like to once more thank Professor Keeb for hosting this event today and every person who is here uh, virtually for listening to us today speak and being committed to this cause. And it is my absolute honor and privilege to pass it over to a woman who is absolutely no stranger to the tactics that I referenced earlier, Miss Jennifer Wilde. 